Hi everyone. Thanks for visiting my channel today. I'm Lori Hale. The word I'm about to share is one of prophetic insight and instruction for the body of Christ. As I was sitting with the Lord the other day, first I received a vision and I saw a storm brewing off in the distance. I heard a mighty fortress is our God. The vision continued and I saw a man sitting in the cleft of a giant rock formation. The Lord highlighted Psalm 18 too. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. The vision shifted and I was overlooking a wilderness ravine and to my right stood the giant rock formation with the man seated in the cleft. I then noticed a different man wandering through the ravine, while off in the distance, I could see a mass of black clouds headed his way. The man in the ravine noticed the impending storm as well, but instead of heading for the visible cleft in the rock formation nearby, he chose to remain out in the open and weather the storm from that position. As I watched the man, he began to gather whatever he could find that appeared useful in order to construct a shelter. He then took refuge in the lean-to-like structure he had created. Suddenly, torrential rains along with heavy winds began hitting the lean-to, tearing it apart, leaving the man unprotected from the elements. The word I kept hearing was rudimentary, or meaning basic, but I also heard severely limited in understanding. And I saw that across the church, certainly not with everyone, but with a good number of believers, because of a lack in understanding, they have constructed a false idea about who God is and how he operates in relation to his children. Almost like they're following some sort of Christian formula. If they just do these steps or pray this certain way, the desired outcome thereafter will suddenly manifest. What the Lord showed me is that these believers have placed their trust in a process rather than actually in God himself. The vision then returned to the man I had seen early on, the one who had chosen to sit in the cleft of the rock. He was still there next to a fire in an elevated position just out of the storm's reach. What I sensed was that though he still had to endure the same storm, he was undisturbed by its presence. Then the Lord said this, those who attempt to ride out the impending storm by seeking refuge in a shelter they themselves have constructed will know the full weight of its impact as the supports these children have used to prop up their makeshift structure were fashioned from questionable material. And thus shall the entire framework give way in the coming days when the predicted turbulence suddenly appears and begins to bear down upon their lives. Yet shall it be that quite a few of my children who profess to have put their trust in me will have their assertions tested and thus will soon realize they don't actually believe their own claims of faith. For these of my own have yet to learn what I trust in God actually means, as in their hearts they do not carry that form of humble disposition which is key to living a life that is solely dependent upon me. And since that is the internal posture commonly found in most believers who line the pews of this current generation of the church, it shall not be surprising to see some who were thought to be strong believers falter as the structure of their beliefs concerning me and our relationship are greatly challenged. For quite a bit of what they had been taught about the Christian walk was inaccurate. And so those false ideas they seek to cling to in order to write out the coming squall shall collapse upon its impact, as surely did they never learn to hide themselves in me, nor stand upon my promises when the dark clouds of tribulation are found looming overhead. And so I have seen that a good number of believers in this nation are unprepared for the turbulent days which lie just ahead, as shallow is the depth of their faith. This impoverished state of belief is to be the expected outcome from that man-made structure commonly referred to as the church. For in most of these assembly halls, the messages preached are systematic in nature and thus focus more on works 
than actually teaching my children how to operate in conjunction with the flow of my spirit. So though it is true that those I have called to teach are to instruct believers in the ways of Christ, it must be a reliance upon both spirit and truth that is taught, for both are to be employed in a believer's life, as Holy Spirit was sent to guide my own into all truth. When the Lord said, in spirit and in truth, I saw the word Lordship appear written in bold white letters suspended as if hanging in the atmosphere. Suddenly a wind blew up against the word, causing it to lift, revealing more layers underneath. Then what I sensed was that the Lord was referring to the continuing revelation of who he really is, that deeper understanding in our spirit about his lordship that undeniable truth which can only be revealed through the power of Holy Spirit. Then I heard, ah, but sadly Holy Spirit is often left out of the equation, and so for a good number of my children in this nation, his influence is severely diminished in their relationship with me, for they were taught that he is no longer actively moving on the earth, and as such, they are ill-equipped to face the heightened level of adversity that is forecast in this season. Then shall it be upon their own strength that these children are found leaning, when the storm already brewing fully manifests. And so shall they find it difficult to sustain any measure of lasting internal peace, for they have not yet learned to connect with me in the depths of their spirit, that space of abiding which was created for all of my children to inhabit. If not in me, where then shall these children run? What shelter can they erect that will enable them to withstand the tempest just ahead? For without already having learned how to enter my presence, how can these children dwell in the peace which surpasses all understanding? Thus shall the faith of many of these believers falter and then fail altogether. So while turbulent days are sure to come, those who belong to me needn't be alarmed, for I have promised to be their place of refuge from any tempest that rages. And though this space of safekeeping is close at hand, still my children must choose to cross into its cleft, and thus hide themselves until the storm has fully passed. For it is in this place of abiding that their troubled minds shall know rest. Yet because dwelling in my presence is not a common teaching amongst the current assembly halls of the church. Most of my children have not discovered how to find me here, which is why I have raised up other voices in this hour who can show these of my own how to find their way into my holy habitation, and once there, shut out the sounds of darkness pressing in upon them, those thoughts of fear and doubt which are generated by the enemy's forces, those which promote the idea of dependence on self over trust in me. Then those who are already found operating in this space of rest and peace, am I calling you forth to lead the way for your fellow brethren to follow, so that these of my children will not be caught up in the chaos and confusion that is set to rain down upon this nation in the days just ahead. Therefore to you do I say, pray for your fellow brethren, those who are already prone to erecting their own shelter when adversity hits. Pray that these believers will not stray in the coming days, but instead will seek refuge in me. For I am the only strong tower that is able to shield them from any and every storm. Before I go, let's pray. Father, thank you for your faithfulness to us, that you forever remain our, our mighty fortress that strong tower we can run to to find a sure shelter from any storm. Lord, I pray for my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, those that are listening to the sound of my voice. I speak against every lie that not only they, but I myself have constructed about you, those that keep us bound to reliance on ourselves. I pray that those lies would be exposed and nullified in our lives. I ask Holy Spirit, that you would release instead a deeper revelation of the truth, that you would peel back the layers of our understanding so that a greater reality of who the Father is is imparted into our hearts. 
Lord, I pray for us now that when the storms of life come, that our first and only thought would be to take refuge in you. And in the coming days when our faith is challenged, let our feet not stray, but keep us firmly planted in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining me today.